Hello everyone, welcome to Victory Fort. I would like to introduce myself. My name is Jello. I am one of the campus missionaries here uh, in Victory Fort. And today we are doing a special Sunday on mental health. As you may already know, October is Mental Health Awareness Month. And all over the world, people are talking about the need for mental health awareness and are campaigning for uh, greater awareness in terms of taking care of ourselves, of our well-being, especially in the aspect of our emotional health and our mental health. So today, we would like to dig deep, to deep dive into that discussion, not just so that we can have a certain level of awareness, but so that we would know how to position ourselves as followers of Christ on how we can be used by God in this world to be a channel of His grace, to be a channel of His strength and hope to those who are struggling in this area of their lives. Joining me today are some of our friends uh, from our church family. Uh, they're here with me. Uh, one of them is Trey. Trey. Hi, everyone. Yeah, Trey is... Uh, an entrepreneur, but he currently works as a communications officer for one of our uh, local centers here in Metro Manila. Uh, another one is Hannah. Hi, everyone. Hannah is a college student. And another one of our uh, guests here is Cess. Hi. Hello, Cess. Welcome. Cess. Hello. Hello, yes. Cess <laughs> uh, is a licensed counselor. So, guys, thank you for joining us in this conversation. And thanks to you too also, to those of you who are uh, joining us online for being with us here in this conversation. So, game. Let's dive into this conversation. This conversation about mental health. Siguro, tanungin ko muna si Cess, no? Just to jumpstart the conversation. So, there's a wide spectrum when it comes to mental health. Kasi, di ba, mental health is a very broad subject. Parang ngayon, di ba, people are using the term mental health, mental health. But we want to understand first uh, about ano ba to? What is this mental health? Some people on one side are saying na we need to raise awareness. People need to have a certain level of recognition of their struggles. Di ba, na ah, meron ka na palang pinagdadaanan pero you're brushing it off. So we need to let people know that they need to be aware and recognize their own struggles when it comes to mental health. On one end of the spectrum, however, there are people who are saying na people are so romant romanticizing, too much romant romanticizing the idea of uh, mental health and depression and anxiety. Now, what's the healthy view when it comes to this subject? in a way that we don't romanticize it so much, but also not in a way that we invalidate those who have real struggles. Right. Thank you so much for asking me that, Anonjelo. And thank you for this segment because um, right now we really need to become aware of mental health. So your question was, uh, what's mental health? No, Mental health, I will describe it as... Um, as equally as important as our physical health. Mm. So mental health is not a separate um, state of a person, but it's something that we all need to, you know, uh, put attention to as well. Right. Now, you were saying uh, may spectrum, no? Uh, it's like two sides of a coin. The other side of a coin is you were saying na, uh, you know, it needs to be validated, the struggles, right, the mental yes. health. And then the, on the other side, naro-romanticize naman siya. So how do we view? So first and foremost, I'd like um, the four of us to be in this state that currently we are facing a very threatening kind of, you know, season. From the mm. very start when the pandemic came, uh, uh, two years ago, and even right now, we are facing with a lot of, um, we can say, threat and something that makes us uh, worry. For example, the economic crisis, what else? What's happening in the world right now, hmm. as we all know it, right? The wars. So, right. at this moment in time, uh, it's hard for us to just easily say na niroromanticize natin siya. Kasi okay. kinakaharap ng hindi lang Philippines, but the whole world. Okay? You mean to say that the struggles are very real? Yes. And it's difficult to say na, ah, masyado lang madrama, or you're just 
uh, over, being overly dramatic about your struggles. Mm -hmm. Kaya naman yung ibang mga tao, no, when they describe it as, ay naku, naruromanticize mo lang yung mental health, it's because naglabasan talaga ang mga, you know, challenges mm -hmm. when it comes to mental health dahil nga, nagka-pandemic. Mm -hmm. So, um, now, how will you now view if it's being romanticized or um, i-validate natin? So, syempre, we live in a season and the reality na parang imposible yatang i-romanticize kasi real siya, lumabas na siya. Mm -hmm. Even before the pandemic, we didn't hear that eh, na naro-romanticize kasi hindi naman lumabas yung mental health. Mm -hmm. So, yep. So, yeah, we need to accept that, acknowledge that, and it's not something that most of us can easily say that we are rom romanticizing it. Right. Mm -mm. Siguro, no, no, most of the people, especially Filipinos, we are so used to being resilient kasi, di ba? Uh, in the face of calamity, storms, uh, di ba nga yung joke, uh, during news broadcast, tapos may mga nasa baha, Filipinos will wave at the camera, hi, 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 okay lang kami dito. Uh, siguro, that's part of it, na even when we're going through something, the default is to just brave through it and smile your way through it. But now uh, you're saying that the probably the healthiest way to to respond to these things now when people air out their sentiments and their concerns is to pay attention to them and not to easily dismiss them na ah, kaya mo yan, or you're just uh, overthinking uh, tama right pay right. attention and listen yes. and be present with that person mm -hmm. yeah says mentioned about the pandemic and how it triggered lots of mental health challenges. I want to ask Trey and, and Hannah, probably Trey first. How has the past two years been to you? And how did it challenge you emotionally and mentally? Um, I'll be completely honest, right? I, the past, the first lockdowns, right? Mm. That was the hardest three months of my life. I'm not even kidding with you. That was, um, I'm the kind of person that I need to be around people. I love people. Mm. I get energy from being around people. And being what I felt was isolated from the whole world, mm. um, it was really, really hard for me to go through. And not just, like, I kind of also re regressed, I felt, if, if that makes sense. Like, I felt like, oh, I go back to bad habits. I go back mm. to... Um, just making myself happy in the moment. I, you know what I mean? Like, it's just the feeling of how do I make myself feel better right now? Mm -hmm. Because I just felt that bad about not being able to talk with someone, not being able to hold someone. Mm -hmm. And even when you did see someone, it's like, hi. Like, you know what I mean? You couldn't even really talk to them. You yeah, couldn't even right. really relate with them. You can't see facial cues and all that stuff. So for me, that was extremely hard mm -hmm. for me to go through. Um, what it's taught me <laughs> is, and, and don't get me wrong, it took a long time, but what it's taught me is to trust in God even more mm -hmm. and to relate to Him even more. And it, that's not a linear thing. I went back and forth and back and forth. I agree. Um, but it's also taught me to tr put more trust in Him, which is sometimes hard. But I found that when I do, He knows best. He knows mm -hmm. better than I do. And His ways are better than mine. Um, and it's still a struggle, if I'm being honest with you, but it's definitely a journey, and it's definitely one that I'm on with God, and I'm glad that I'm on it and not away from it. Yeah. Right. I guess it's easy for us to uh, look back now in retrospect, because we have the benefit of hindsight. Uh, now that we can acknowledge that God has been there with me through this, yeah. but while we're at it, while we're while we're going through it and experiencing it, yeah. uh, it was really very difficult, yeah. you know? And the effects are real. So, for example, you mentioned about how you regressed into bad habits. Mm -hmm. uh, probably that's just one of the effects. Yep. Could you tell us about the other uh, negative effects that it did on oh, you? Um, <clears throat> relating to the bad habits, of course, you had like waking up at like 2 p.m. You had like um, 
not being studious, not working hard, not doing any of that stuff. Because it felt like, what am I doing this for? Mm. Because it felt like the next day will be the same as today. I am not moving forward. I'm not doing anything. And that's just how it felt every single day mm. while I was just at home. Right. Um, it also, and at the same time, I'll be honest with you, I, my, like, I didn't read my Bible as much also. Because I was just like, eh, I'll do it mm. tomorrow. It'll be the same as today anyway. Unlike, for example, oh, God, I had a tough day. I did this, I did this, I did this. So, okay, let me rest in you. No, it's not that. It was, eh, I did nothing today. Okay lang yan. And to me, that was really, it was really bad. Like, it, was, it felt bad. And at, in hindsight also, I was like, ah, oh, I wish I didn't do that. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, it's still something that, um, like, I look back and I'm like, oh, okay, this is me at the, a form that I don't want to be. Mm-hmm. But it's also helped me relate to other people. Be like, oh yeah, me too. Like, you had a bad time, me too. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's for me, that's one of the biggest, thing I've, biggest things I've learned. Thank that. you, thank you, Trey. Uh, thanks for the authenticity also. Uh, Hannah. Well, like everyone, it was, it was a pretty bad time. I mean, all, obviously we've all faced our own challenges and just like what Trey shared. Um, personally, for him, it was the first lockdown. Mine was actually towards the end of the lockdown when things were slowly opening up. Um, it was mentally challenging because I grew to be so anxious throughout the past two years. So when we were at the point where we were going, oh, we were going out, um, it was difficult for me to go out without that fear of, you know, catching the virus. What if my parents catch it, my Lola? And obviously at that time, we didn't have vaccination. So we were really scared and mm. we were, we really didn't know what was gonna happen yeah. to people's And the lives. first wave was really scary. Uh. Yeah. Oh, it was. Really For life-threatening. Sure. Terrifying, yeah. <laughs> it really was. Um, so that definitely played a big role in, you know, sort of building that anxiety in me. Um, so I was having a hard time going out it would get so bad to the point where when I'm about to leave the car, I would hyperventilate and I would, you know, have panic attacks. And to be honest with you, I didn't really know what triggered that. It just happened. Like, it would happen uh, one moment I'm okay and then the next moment, you know, I'm not the best. And obviously, if you're challenged mentally, it also affects you emotionally. So it was hard for me to be at peace knowing that all of these thoughts were going on in my mind. I was just worried about my health, my family's health, um, obviously worried about the world, the nation, all of these things. Um, It really took a toll on me emotionally. It was hard for me to find joy in every day, especially since you mentioned we're just at home every single day. And the least you can do is to just learn how to find joy in the mundane. But that's something I couldn't do Mm. because, of course, I was too occupied with thinking about all these fears and all these possibilities. Um, So it was a hard time for me because when I would feel anxious, I would focus on the anxiety. I would focus on the fear. And it would sort of paralyze me and blind me to the point where it was hard for me to run to God, which is really ironic, you know, because when you're fearful, the first instinct should be, Lord, I surrender this to you. I know you're going to give me peace. But um, in all honesty, it was hard. It was hard for me to go to God in that moment. And I know that he doesn't, you know, he doesn't condemn me for that. But obviously, as someone who grew up in a Christian household, it makes you feel bad because you're like, oh, I'm not Christian enough, you know. Um, So I, yeah, it was, it was a, really tough time for me to put my trust in God. Of course, now it's a lot better, thank God. Um, But at that time, I was so focused on what I was feeling. And I think the reason why is because I didn't know why I was going through it. I never fully understood, where is this anxiety coming from? Sure, there are a lot of elements with, you know, coronavirus and everything, but what's the root of all of this? Right. And I just, I, uh, to this day, I still don't have that answer. Mm. So I think that's what challenged me the most, is not knowing where all of this was coming from. Yeah. That's a great angle to, uh, to investigate or to discuss right now. Uh, later, I'm going to ask Sis. But it seems like there are three things that are at play whenever we go through a mental health uh, episode uh, challenge. Uh, there's fear. The, for example, the pandemic, the coronavirus. Uh, created real threats for us. Uh, there's a real valid fear at the moment. And this fear triggers our anxiety for what 
could possibly happen to us. Uh, I could possibly die, or my loved ones could die, or what's gonna happen if my parents catch the virus, or if I bring the virus at home. We are channeling, we're projecting the fear into the future in the form of our anxiety. But uh, like what Hannah was saying, there's a root to it. And it's somehow connected to something in the past. Uh, possibly a, a, an experience in the past, a, a wound from the past, a trauma. Could you speak more about it, uh, Ses? Sure. Well, um, we can say that the pandemic um, became the triggering point right. for all of us because that's when we become, you know, so conscious with our unconscious selves, if I may say that, because um, a human... Ganda nun. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> We've been so conscious of our conscious self. Yeah. And then we were put in a place, because uh, a, a person is composed of also the unconscious self of what we call. Right. So, uh, before the pandemic, of course, marami tayong ways of coping mechanisms, just what like Trey said a while ago, he was saying that, you know, he wants to go out, he wants to be with his friends, and mm. suddenly, pandemic came, and then siya na lang isolate siya, no? and even Hannah. So, well, in that sense, yung anxiety na lahat, na lahat tayo, we felt it, that is a beneficial anxiety, if I may uh, mm. describe it, kasi may anxiety that is um, intrusive or... Mm clinical na siya, no? na it can lead to disorder, pero may anxiety na beneficial in which appropriate kasi yung mga naramdaman natin because there's a threat. Right. It's just that um, yung mga hindi natin na-process, the root that uh, she was explaining, lumabas din doon. Mm -hmm. Okay? So maraming factors uh, when we talk about roots kasi ang mental health is connected also to our um, genetics. Merong... Uh, uh, our psychosocial developmental stages that mm -hmm. we face, like our early childhood experiences, right. yes. stuff like that, you know, the kind of um, family that we grew up with, the environment that we grew up with, so many factors, no? So I think um, it's connected to what we are all facing, especially, ako, I'm into ano right now, eh, object relation theory. So it's one of the approaches in psychotherapy where in um, the very crucial stage of a person is when this um, person was born in a trusted world. So the attachment style. Mm -hmm. the, uh, that's, ano, the pro proponent of that is Bowlby. Eh. So yung attachment style natin, when we were born, um, we needed to, you know, to be secure with the way our parents, uh, you know, mm -hmm. were nurturing us. But during those times, we didn't know pa kasi how our parents uh, were attending to us. Did we able to form that emotional formation or nagkaroon ba ng emotional rupture? Mm -hmm. In a sense na nung, you know, uh, during our baby moments, di ba, umiiyak tayo. So, the parents would describe it as kapag umiiyak ang baby, there are just three reasons. It's either gutom or may pain that this um, baby couldn't, you know, articulate yes. because baby pa siya. And then the third one, may poop or basa na yung diaper. Mm. Now, it's very vital for all of us to also go back to that time so that we can understand why we have responses like this. Mm -hmm. Kasi uh, those were the times when our emotional formation happened and mm -hmm. created. So kapag ka-abusive or you know, um, very traumatic nga yung environment and then probably our parents were very busy with their jobs and, you know, um, nobody attended to you nung, uh, nung, ano, nung baby ka pa. Then, without us knowing, growing up, that's why we feel at times na sad tayo. Parang mm -hmm. we belong naman to a family but it seems like Bakit parang feeling ko mag-isa pa rin ako kahit may pamilya yes. ako? Those yeah, stuff. that's what Hana was describing kanina. What's happening to me? What's the root of this? Mm -hmm. And now, uh, if I were to summarize it, no, the behavior, the actions, the responses that we do now as adults uh, are rooted to what 
we have been through, what we've gone through as children or probably uh, during our early developmental stage. Uh, siguro, the only thing that's, that goes on in my head now, uh, as I segue this to another portion of this discussion, is now that we know that there's a lot that goes on in the mind of a person during a, a triggering moment, no? uh, how do we now help others as Christians, especially in a church where discipleship is a premium? And we want to help people follow Jesus and fellowship with one another and fish for people. We want to, we, we want to encourage them with the word of God. Uh, how do we now do that? Uh, knowing that there's a lot that goes on. Probably I want to ask uh, Trey and his personal journey. Um, okay, so just a bit of context. I grew up very Christian family. Well, I don't say very. Um, a starting Christian family. I'll put mm. it that way. Uh, my parents were new Christians when they had me. And there was a lot of figuring out that I had to do. But at the end of the day, because of what happened to me, I felt like I couldn't be vulnerable, if that makes sense. Meaning, or I couldn't be emotionally vulnerable mm. often. It, it took a lot for me to do that. Um, especially when other people were, were, were blah, especially when other people were watching me. It felt like, for some reason, even though I know it's not true, it felt like the whole church was watching me, mm. waiting for me to make a mistake. Because when I grew up, everyone was like, oh, that's Trey, mabait siya. So in my head, ah, that's who I am. Okay, I can't be mm. anything else. And I grew up that way, and I grew up with that pressure. Even though I genuinely don't believe my parents put that on me. Yes, it's, a, it's something that you... It's, it's just, it just developed yeah, through okay. circumstance. It's not, my parents didn't tell me it. Mm. My parents didn't say, you have to no, always be perfect. Like, no, mm. it's not that. But rather, it's just circumstances around me that made me think, okay, I have to be this. Mm -hmm. Which meant that I couldn't relate to a lot of people, or I couldn't say that I could relate to a lot of people. Because in my head, I would think, oh, I can't be like that. So if someone says, oh, bro, I'm going through this, I'm going through that, mm -hmm. before I would have to think conceptually, oh, what, what's the right thing to say? Mm -hmm. Or what should I be saying, right? Uh, what, what does the Bible say about this? Uh, let's go to the word right away, you know what I mean? But I realized that I've actually failed to relate to a person. I failed to say, you know what, I feel that way also sometimes. Mm -hmm. Because that was me later on in life. I, like, after a lot of processing, a lot of praying, also a lot of, you know, uh, pleading to God about, to be honest and to be vulnerable with people. So to be honest with you, I think that one way that we could really relate to another person mm -hmm. is to be honest about our journeys. Mm -hmm. That sometimes we don't have a fairy tale journey. Sometimes our relationship with God isn't, uh, my life before was bad, I met Christ, and then it's perfect. Mm. That's not our story for most of us. If that's your story, great, amazing. I'm so happy for you. But that's not my story. My story is long. My story requires a lot of time. Mm -hmm. my, require, my story required a lot of steps, um, a lot of repentance. And I think when I started telling people the honest side to me, they were like, ah, we can relate to you pala. Or, oh, can you tell me more? Because I get what you're feeling. And to me, I love that side of it. I love the feeling of, I don't have to just be, I'm a leader. Or, I'm a Christian. Like, no, I am a human being that has flaws. Mm -hmm. And I just know a Savior who helps me out. All I can do is introduce you to the Savior. I'm not your Savior, right? Well, I think when I had that perspective, a lot of things changed. Mm -hmm. Because of the fact that I said, I am broken like you are. Right. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the Savior together. I think that changed a lot of how I viewed being vulnerable, being sad, being honest even. And being honest when you're in the middle of something. Before I said, I thought that you had to be done with something. Oh, I, I overcame that now. I can tell that story. But sometimes you're in the middle of it. And I mm -hmm. think it's okay to tell those stories while you're in the middle. Right. Hannah. Well, very similar to Trey. Um, I grew up in a Christian household, and I grew up going to kids' church. I was basically a church kid. Um, and so, like him, I really grew up having that pressure of being perfect, 
you know, like I, I'm pretty sure it was self-imposed. My parents didn't tell me anything or the, the people in church really never told me, you have to be this, you have to be that. It was just really me. I put that pressure upon myself. Um, and it was hard for me to be honest with myself and with everyone else. And it was, it was hard for me to honestly say that I wasn't okay. Because growing up, I thought that if you had Jesus, you don't have any problems mm. anymore. Same. Which, Same. right? <laughs> um, and to an extent, that is true. But um, I, how I viewed it as a, young, as a young child, I always thought, okay, if I have Jesus, then I can't be sad. I can't be angry. I can't be irritated. That is unnatural. It's not something that I should be feeling. But as I grew older, I realized that um, that's all part of life. And that doesn't make me any less of a Christian or a believer. It just makes me human. Mm. So as I grew older and as I got more involved in the church and I was leading, I was part of the music ministry, there is definitely still a part of me who thought that I had to be presentable. I had to present myself to everyone because now there are actually people who look up to me and, you know, they come to me with their problems and they think that I have, you know, great gotcha. advice to give, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I put that upon myself and I said, no, you can't be, uh, no, you can't not be okay you always have to be present and you always have to have something to say to these people because um in youth service i was always told hannah you're so wise for your age blah 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 and honestly that got to me so i was like okay i'm wise i'm okay so i should never show them that i'm not all of that um but i did have a breaking point where god really told me you have got to stop pretending and you have mm. got to stop proving yourself because there's nothing left to prove um, so through that, it was a very hard process, and to be honest, I'm still going through it. But when God reminded me of that, and he, he really told me, you can just come as you are. You don't have to present yourself as someone who's, you know, put together, always worshiping God from Monday to Sunday. You know, it's okay that you're not okay. Mm. It's okay that you're going through a tough time in your relationship with God. It's okay that you're sad. Um... So it was through that that I realized I have, I realized that I can just be myself with everyone, even if being myself means showing my brokenness mm. and being vulnerable. Right. Yeah. Your stories resonate with me so well, and uh, especially speaking as a campus missionary, I'm a full-time staff. I'm a preacher of the Word of God. Yeah. I <laughs> preach about hope. I preach yeah. about finding strength in Christ yeah. and persevering through trials and uh, being joyful in afflictions, you know, stuff like that. And those things are true. But uh, on, the other, uh, on the other hand, I think the ego need in me will want to prove that I am walking the talk. So I will yeah, always true. have to show them that I'm strong, that I know how to go to God in times of trials and, I, and the, the struggles don't, uh, don't get into me, don't defeat me. Uh, that compromised my emotional health yeah. so severely because I, I started neglecting myself and not pay, I started not paying attention to my own needs. But that's when my best learning comes in terms of my relationship with God. Mm -hmm. That... Uh, when God said to love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, strength, doesn't just mean loving Him when you're at your best, but loving the Lord with all your heart and soul and mind and strength also means loving Him through your weaknesses, through your tears, through your moments of sadness. And Lord, I am not at my best. I am not okay. I am questioning my faith now, but nevertheless, Lord, I still love you, and I am loving you with all that I have, all have, uh, all that I have left. Uh, maybe that's an encouragement also to to anybody who might resonate with that. Uh, you might be going through something, and uh, you might be thinking of uh, turning away. And this doesn't make sense, you know. Do we time is my my struggles and my fears are more real than my faith right now, and then the the, the promises of God. But I don't know. It's just that in that moment, uh, I just know what, what Paul meant to boast in my weakness mm. because God's yeah. strength is made perfect in that moment of yeah. weakness. 
I want to ask uh, Cess now because it seems like now there are there's a growing dichotomy between spirituality and mental health or psychology. Now, other people would say, uh, faith doesn't work, spirituality doesn't work. Christians would just say, pag pray mo lang yan, faith lang, kapit ka lang kay Lord. And it doesn't work. So other Christians get this illusion and say, I don't want this, this doesn't work, these things don't work for me. Now I go to the real deal. I go to mental health professionals because my leaders can help me, my pastors can help me. But it, is there really a dichotomy or as a Christian counselor yourself, where does faith and uh, the, the psychology behind mental health intersect? Are they separate or is there really a point of intersection? Yeah, when God created the heavens and the earth, the in the beginning, the earth was formless and um, empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. Meaning, everything that God created in this world is God's. So I wonder why people put dichotomy between psychology and theology. So psychology in itself is, you know, creation of God as well. It's just that there are probably people who would like to uh, find or decode a solution that human can't just, you know, put solution on it. Right. Like... Um, Again, we are Christians, and you know, more than labeling ourselves Christians is really the depth of our acknowledgement that there is someone who created the world, the mm -hmm. earth, the universe, right? So, in fact, uh, sa psychology right now, um, there are a lot of study already and uh, research na even the spirituality of, say, clients or mm. those who have been struggling with mental health is being used already or being, um, you know, being brought into uh, one, as one of the approaches. Right. So, nasa ano na siya, nasa research na siya, na spirituality also helps when mm. it comes to, you know, having a healthy mental um, state. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think uh, only people, you know, subjectively describe the dichotomy between the two ology, the study, the mm. study of psych and the study of the word of right. God, right? So, and then, of course, um, well, uh, there are people who also confess or acknowledge themselves as not believing to the one who is greater than them. So, that's when they started to somehow, okay, this won't work. Uh, mm. Spirituality won't work because it's science. So probably for us, let's continue to discover, let's continue to put ourselves in that position wherein, you know, um, uh, yeah, there's someone greater than us. There's God. Mm. I mean, whoever it is, nobody can put an absolute solution except that, you know, when you are in that desperate moment of your life, the darkest moment of your life, you know, could it be that it's when that Christian person not just acknowledge logically that God loves me, but even this person's right brain, the emotional mm. part of the person, would also acknowledge that that love is more than the knowledge, but that love is also the heart of God right. for all of us. Mm, agree. Uh, I remember this passage in the most famous psalm uh, ever written, Psalm 23. <laughs> Even uh, those who don't read the Bible know it. There's a passage there that says, He refreshes my soul. But the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me into, uh, he, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He refreshes my soul. And that is a very fascinating passage for me. Uh, that God refreshes my soul. Soul care is a big thing now. Uh, as people acknowledge the need for self-care, self-nurturing, and soul care, it fascinates me in a way that uh, God is also concerned about my soul. Actually, the Bible describes him as the lover of our soul. And that made me realize that the only way for me to nurture my soul is to allow God to refresh it, to stitch it back together if it's disintegrated, or to make it whole again. Because the things that we are going through, they they have a an they they have an effect. They they affect our souls. 
they disintegrate us from within. Diba? Uh, the word anxiety actually means in the Bible, uh, it, this, it's the, the description is to be pulled apart from different directions. It's like you're being pulled apart by horses. <laughs> uh, and that's what anxiety does. Diba? Uh, it, parang it's stretching us to different directions. But in the same passage where anxiety, when the Bible said, do not be anxious, uh, but in everything, by prayer and petition, uh, present your request to God and the God of peace, or and the peace of God uh, that transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. It fascinates me, it amazes me that the word peace there uh, means wholeness, to be whole again. That while anxiety pulls us apart, the peace of God holds us together. Now, soul care, for me now, is a partnership with God, the lover of my soul, actually the, the, the one who gives me the breath of life in my very life. So again, let's wind this down. Uh, for Hannah and Trey, do you have a word of advice for, uh, for Hannah, for students who are going through mental health challenges or are having a hard time in their studies because of the many changes uh, in the academic landscape, uh, all of those things, even juggling their responsibilities at home, with their friends and uh, in school. What's a word that you can give to them to encourage them? I think the number one thing that I would like to say to everyone who might be struggling, um, not just mentally, but obviously with your studies as well. Um, I think it's important to acknowledge the fact that you're struggling first. Um, I think as our generation, we have a tendency to perform and sort of pretend like everything's okay, but it's really not. Um, so I would like to, you know, encourage people to just be open to yourself and be honest with yourself and say that, hey, I'm not okay. And um, I guess I would say, if you're struggling with something and you really, you're really in a place where you don't know if you're gonna be able to overcome it, I would like to encourage you and say that you will, but it will take time. And that's something that you need to acknowledge. You can't pressure yourself to be better right away, especially if everyone around you is feeling great already and you know they've overcome their depression and their anxiety. That doesn't mean that you have to match their pace because you are going through your own journey, you are going through um, your own walk with God, and it's okay to take your time because healing takes time. Mm. And I know that that's a statement that's been said over and over again, but somehow it's hard for us to apply that. Um, so be patient with yourself, be compassionate to yourself, be kind to yourself, because if you pressure yourself to reach a point where you want to be better, chances are you're never gonna reach that point because you're putting too much pressure on yourself to the point where you can't actually sit with your emotions and process it. Mm. So I would say, number one, it's normal to feel that way. So don't beat yourself up about it, especially if you're the type who expects yourself to be something or someone. Um, number two, acknowledge it. Acknowledge your brokenness and acknowledge the fact that you're not okay. And number three, just go through the process because you will definitely reach that point where you will be okay, but it will take time. So be patient, um, be kind to yourself. It, you will definitely have some moments where it feels like you're not moving at all, but that doesn't mean that God isn't doing anything. Maybe he's just teaching you how to be still and how to acknowledge your brokenness in knowing that you will be whole eventually. Wonderful, thank you, Hannah. Uh, Trey, any word of advice to Christians who are attempting, trying to help someone uh, in their journey towards mental wellness or emotional wellness? I think one important thing for that to happen is when we don't minimize pain. Mm -hmm. When we don't say, okay lang yan, just pray more, have more faith. Um, while I understand the heart behind these statements, it also minimizes what the person's going through. Mm. As if we don't understand that they're hurting, mm. that they're feeling pain. Yeah. 
sometimes naman, no, the, uh, the motivation isn't to minimize, eh, but no, it's not. just out of uh, mm. ignorance, diba, na, yeah. I, I don't know what to say anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, I've done that. You know yes, what I mean? Yeah. I've, I've been me through too. that. I've been that person. But I have learned also, like, you know, someone comes up to me, I don't know what to say, I'll pray with you, bro, and then uh, yeah. you walk away. But then, um, it's really journeying with someone. Right. It's really asking them the important, tough questions. Um, and it's also expecting them not to tell you everything right away. Because mm. people take time. I took a lot of time, you know, but someone journeyed with me for 10 years. And guess what? 10 years later, that's the only time I could tell the full truth. Mm. Sometimes things take time. And sometimes, uh, not so, no, not sometimes. And you always need to be walking with somebody. Mm -hmm. Whether you need the help or whether you're someone else, you walk with them. Right. You go through it with them. Mm -hmm. you, you listen to the things you don't want to hear. You know what I mean? Yeah. You listen to their struggles, their pain, their mistakes. You listen to all of that. Sometimes they're not repentant yet. That's okay. Walk with them. I think that's really important. We're not mm -hmm. too quick to, like, oh, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's a sin, that's a sin. Like, no, we establish relationships first. Why are we so quick to change someone? Mm -hmm. It's only God who can change the heart. Yeah. But sometimes we as Christians think, I have to change your heart right away. Mm -hmm. When sometimes things, sometimes, like what Hannah said, it takes time. Yeah. And I think another thing would definitely be to put your trust in God and, and say, I am not someone's savior. Mm -hmm. God, you are. I cannot save a person. I cannot change a person's heart. Only God can. Yeah. All I can do is walk with you, and I'm willing to do it. Mm. Let's go. Let's walk. Yeah. And I think that establishing that relationship and telling them, if you need more help beyond me, that's okay. You know what I mean? I don't have to be everything for you. Mm. If you need to see a therapist, if you need to see a counselor, go ahead. I don't have to be everything for you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really important step for us to make as Christians, and as people walking with one another. Mm. And I just think that, yeah, those are the important things for right. me. So you said just be with the person. Sometimes presence is already enough. Yeah. Uh, without words, just the, just the quiet assurance that the person, that you're going through it with someone. And you don't always have to talk about the pain all the time. Eh? But sometimes what the person needs is just companionship, to enjoy life, yeah. to eat uh, their favorite food with, or to always, go to always. places <laughs> with, right? Always, yeah. Uh, always. And for the person, to have, for, for us, to have a sense of humility, mm. that we can't fix their problem. It's not our job. Our job is just really to love them through the journey and to be with them. Great, thank you. Uh, Ses, uh, as we land this, Probably I, I want to ask for two expert advice. Number one is for how, what do you advise for those who are going through something or maybe not going through something. This is for everyone. Eh, diba? We all need to take care of our emotional and mental state. Yep. Uh, what are the best practices or practical things that you can advise to, to us and to our listeners on how we can take care of our mental well-being? Yeah, to all of you who are watching or listening and the, for the three of you here right now, um, it must have been very hard the past three years. Thank you. Very hard. <laughs> Breakdown. It was. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And um, it's not easy to say that you're doing a great job and I myself, Siguro, this is the first time I met you or I've been talking to you, but I'm proud of you. No matter hard or no matter probably you've seen yourself bad, you are still that young people who is so faithful and who's, uh, you know, being used by God as instruments right now to, you know, to uh, bring life, mm. to speak life. So, um, I agree, it's okay not to be okay, and it's not a lesson as a Christian to not be okay because that's when you're going to feel the unconditional love of Christ, and that's when He died on the cross. Like, He didn't just die for us to become good or for us to do good works, but He also died even for our worst state. That's why the love of Christ cannot... Um, no, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ, neither death, 
nor life, nor angels, nor demons, even the demon that we somehow, you know, recognize ourselves, those things cannot separate us, separate us from the love of Christ. So as a professional, kasi di ba, uh, right now, hindi siya romanticize, eh. nangyayari talaga siya, it's real. That's why we just put words on that na niroromanticize natin kasi marami nang ang lumabas, no? So siguro, my suggestion for all of us, especially the young people, kasi ang pro- asking for professional help then will, you know, will add up to kind of burden as well or uh, things that they will think kasi mahal mm. <laughs> mahal magpa magpa psychiatrist mag uh, diba to to seek professional counselor and then we're facing economic crisis we're facing like uh, you know unemployment sa mga parents natin pati sila ano na rin sila anxious kung saan nila kukunin yung budget for the family so siguro um i suggest for all of us to not really join force but to help one another by becoming that safe space mm-hmm. to those people who are close to us safe space would mean you know um again to be present even if you won't say anything but just allow the person to air out what's on this person's mind to the point that means and scary kasi yung mga nasa mind talaga ng tao i wanna die mm-hmm. yeah. right but when people think about this, these are the secondary emotion. Eh? The reason they speak about those statements, because it's so painful, it's so hard, and they're trying to fight, but seemingly they found themselves that I couldn't fight any longer. Kaya naiisip nila yon. So let's take it seriously and not, you know, lightly. Because, you know, um, yeah, you are all valuable. Even if you don't feel it right now, I'm telling you, you have a purpose. The reason you were born on earth without you knowing it, because you have a mission and you have purpose on earth. Kahit hindi nyo pa nakikita at mahirap i-embrace kasi nga ang naka-highlight is yung bad na ginawa ko, stuff like that. So yes, be that safe, safe space to uh, those people na close sa inyo and don't judge create a non-judgmental environment with these right. people. Yes. Uh, a non-judgmental environment and that's how we as a community of faith, as people who know where to find hope and that we can go through the valley of the shadow of death and come out alive and victorious as we uh, people of faith know. We can provide that space uh, for, for them. Uh, sabi nga ng mga experts, we heal when we are in a space of unconditional love and acceptance, we know that we can find healing in God because in God there is unconditional healing, uh, unconditional love and acceptance. And by extension, as His people, we can be that here on earth for those who are broken, for those who are needing uh, sanctuary to heal from their wounds. Thank you very much, uh, Trey, Cess, and Hannah for joining us. Thank, thank you for you. this very rich conversation. And thank you also to you for tuning in. Uh, we hope that you got something from this conversation. Uh, if you need any support, prayer, uh, in terms of your uh, emotional or mental uh, well-being, kindly drop a message and uh, reach out to us. We'll be there. to. We'll do our best to support you. Thank you. And yes, that's it.